Hey, Composing Gloves here. I am wearing a hat, and today we're going to be talking about Isotope Trash 2. This is the intro video to the series. Now, there's already several series out there on Trash 2, so why watch this one? Well, there's a lot of review videos that cover that try to cover the whole thing in either one or two videos. And then there's the one by Isotope themselves, which are really, really cool. You should go watch those. They're, they're general overview videos. Now, this one's going to be an overview. I'm going to go into depth. But we're also, what's going to make this one different is I'm going to try and give you a lot of engineered examples like of it actually in a piece of music. Now, it'll probably be a snippet of music. It won't be like a whole track, but it, there'll probably be ones where there are in whole tracks. But basically, I'm going to try to put it in a context. And we're going to talk about things, what they are, what they do, and some ideas about how to use them. That's my big thing is I want you to walk away being able to do something with this. Like if you say, oh, I want to sound like this, you have an idea of what Trash 2 can do for you. You're like, oh, I'm going to reach for Trash 2 because I want to use this tool in this way with Trash 2. And also, hopefully, I want to start getting you to the point where you jog yourself into doing things like your own experiments. And you'll have some sort of an idea of how you're going to go about doing it. So... What we're going to do is we're going to look at each individual mod, um, module. We're going to look at examples, why things work the way they do, and sort of get a little more into depth into the actual workflow and creative process, as well as the understanding what's going on and a little bit of the philosophy about what a certain move could potentially mean for you. Now, these principles will apply across all DAWs. Depending if your DAW can't do like automation or something like that, get a new DAW. Okay, that's, that's just my advice. But maybe you really like that particular one you're working on because some of them shockingly can't do automation which is kind of weird and i normally get confronted with at least one message in my inbox about like hey how can i do this and my answer is buy ableton buy fl buy pro tools buy something else then use that one for what it's good at or whatever so anyways that aside let's start off with the sound let's let's start off with that so i have this sort of like pretty hard lead sound here and it's in the context of a small drop granted it's a pretty thin drop but imagine like you just had this big riser maybe you're going to have this like small opener filler and then it's going to come in with a full drop so you're going to kind of get them with a riser a sort of a drop and then a big drop or something okay and so that's what that was sort of the thing i was envisioning here anyways let me play it for you so here it is uh and that bass line is pretty much like 95 percent trash too Something else about Trash 2 is it has a lot of potential for a mix application. And you'll see that as we go along. Because I reach in there for the filters. Now, I have Neutron as well. So I'll go to Neutron first. But Trash 2 presents some, some interesting things creatively. And so I like pulling it out just for that. Like it's got convolution uh, capabilities. And that's really cool. Uh, okay, so let's look at this, right? So how much of this is Trash 2? What is the sound? Now, you see it's a very hard lead type sound. A lot of people might go for a sound like this using vocoding or using... Uh, it's, it's kind of a mix up like between FM and vocoding. Not a lot of people might perceive like, oh, this sounds like a whole bunch of crazy levels of distortion, but people will go after stacks and get something like if I were to hear that sound, I don't know what I would think the first time through. I'd probably grab a saw wave and start just distorting the snot out of it and trying to get something close to that using the, the fruity wave shaper. Now trash two, let's look at how much of this is trash two. So this is what is trash two. <laughs> You'll notice that I have these other two leads. You'll notice that's a substantial chunk of the sound. What are these other two guys doing? Well, let's listen. So that's all they are. They're just filling in sort of some of the sonic gaps that this has. Now, this is a really full sound. At this point, you could actually do more distortion, but we've reached a point where it's a pretty dynamic sound. You should probably look at other elements in your mix. So like we could add a cymbal crash that lines up with our kick, and we could try mixing those differently, and we could add in some sort of a... Uh, I don't know, some sort of a pad or a core movement or some stabs, something else to fill up the mix. Uh, making your bass more complicated here probably isn't the answer. However, one thing that is unique is you'll also notice that it dynamically changes with the input. That's because it's based on a wave shaper algorithm. So as you change how loud the signal is, it's going to interact with this wave shaper in Trash 2 differently. So let's go over, let's do an overview of Trash 2 real quick. And then we'll move on to other videos to do this. Oh, by the way, if you want to make this sound, let's talk about what a, what is this sound with without Trash 2. Now, this is a 2. Did you notice there's actually three Trash 2s on here? And so if we get rid of them, uh, this is what it sounds like uh, without these sounds. 
It's just a saw wave. Like, whoa, just a saw wave. And what are these guys? Well, that's just a sub base. So just go check out my Harmer from the Ground Up 1 first video. Oh, no, not Harmer from the Ground Up. Sound design with Harmer. Sound design with Harmer sub base video. And that's pretty much what I'm doing here. And this guy is a layer. It's pretty much a saw wave with some distortion just to give a little more defined character so it's easier to grab the texture. We'll talk about this stuff as we go. But as you can see, this is just a saw wave. Like plain and simple, there's nothing else on it. I just wanted to put Trash 2 on it and start messing with it. And I've turned it down quite a bit because it's pretty loud coming out the gate from Harmer. So we come into our first Trash 2, right? I turn that on and I literally just grabbed a preset. The preset is Le Fat. It's in the aggressive folder. And then it goes into another preset, which is Ice Icy Scoop. Well, also in the aggressive folder. So you see if we could scroll up here aggressive and so that's where it is now if we turn it on and play it that's what the top one's doing now let's turn on the bottom one so they're both kind of cool but let's mix them now really quick a quick note on volume you notice it got substantially louder and a lot of people when things get louder instantly sort of think they sound better even if you were the, the way you should really judge things is if you were to turn them down to be the same volume as they were before so that the only changes are changes in the spectrum changes in the the timbre of the sound and the adsr envelope and stuff that's those are the changes that you're really changing if if you make one sound suddenly get louder your ability to judge it gets sort of lost because the way you perceive that sound will change as well because if you were to just boost up the other sound maybe you would like this sound more than you would like this sound and that's i cover stuff like that in my critical listening series so go check out that if that's sort of a new principle to you but you want to make sure that they don't change in level otherwise you could have problems and isotope actually gives you some options uh, about setting up that if you're going to do a lot of a being like that personally i just like to keep in mind that when crap gets louder i'm listening for the timbre not for that because it's sort of a pain in the butt to be going through and doing this a b thing when you're trying to be creative so Anyways, I combined two of those, and then I have this last one, which I'm actually not using it for distortion. You see, I've only got the filter module active, and I am using it for filtering. And it's actually a moving filter. It's this guy at the beginning. These guys are the filter. And then you see it goes right there. So you see I have some sort of an idea, but it's still like really raw right now. Okay, let's talk about Trash. Let's do a quick overview of Trash. Trash 2 is a multi-band distortion plugin, and you'll find this on most overview videos. So the big the big thing about Trash 2 is the fact that it is multi-band distortion. So you have three bands, and you actually have two wave shapers. Now, you see stage one and stage two, and they each have a filter. These filters are important because of where they land in the signal chain. Uh, so... You can, you can wave shape something, filter it, and then send it through a second stage of shaping and filtering. Uh, you can, and you can manipulate this graph. They give you a ton of already made uh, preset graphs, and then you can actually use your own curve and you can mix it with their curve to get like some crazy curve. Now what makes this really powerful is the fact that you've got these crossovers and you could set this up using various other plugins. This plugin basically gives it to you all right here in one big go. And that's what makes it powerful is the way that these stages are all just in one easy to grab spot. So I'm not going to like I could grab the FL's wave shaper, the fruity wave shaper, and then grab several things, band split a signal and try and set up something like this. But it's just such a huge pain. This is so much simpler. So if we have like, as you can see, I can apply a different distortion to my low end, a different one to my high, my mid end, my mid and a one to my high end. And so because of this, I can make specific distortions that sound good across the spectrum. Instead of having to apply one across the whole spectrum, might not sound as great. And so this also allows you to get really aggressive in ways that aren't possible uh, in, uh, with one band. It's just not possible. You won't get the same sounds at all. This is outrageously powerful. And you get two stages of this, okay? So that's like their heart is this wave shaper concept. And if you look up what a wave shaper does... Um, on a on like a layman's level and I don't understand it on like a DSP level But basically what happens is and this is like the standardized definition a signal comes into the wave shaper The wave shaper changes the wave form it imprints a wave That's why it's called a wave shaper and then that's what you hear And so that will introduce new harmonics and these variations on harmonics is what you would call the wave shaping It's a little if you go on Wikipedia and look it up. It actually gets pretty interesting you can see some of the formulas used and some of the, like, the different ideas and 
They even have a part about like issues and whatever. And if you go looking around DSP forms, you can find stuff. We're going to be looking at this more from a what do shapes sound like and how do I get the sound that I want. We're not going to like dwindle down on like technical details and stuff um, because I, I personally, I don't totally get everything that I'm reading when I read stuff like that. It's one of those things that's like good 50% goes over my head currently trying to catch up on my math. But a lot of you guys probably just are looking for sound too. You don't care to like make one of these. So that's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do sound. So next up we have this filter. And this filter is basically like an EQ. And so you can have this on and use it as an EQ, which is what I'm doing with this guy here. So if we close this, and there's an option to make it so that doesn't pop up at the beginning. But uh, you can see you could, it's an EQ. And we're gonna be talking about this and looking at it. What's cool about this is the amount of filters and they give you some cool valve filters. So we're gonna be looking at these. And they have all these different options, you know, reset. Now these things are across on everything. You can reset. You also have this thing called the graph. This allows you to change the order of processing and you can actually do parallel processing. If we put something next to it, where's the first filter? You see, you can do parallel processing like that and get a, a different sound. You can change the way these modules are in, in their order. It's super important, especially when you have some sort of sound at the beginning, a change in a filter here will dramatically change the rest of the sound. Should be a given, but I see that question a lot too. Oh, does it matter what order my stuff is in? Yes times a thousand yes so uh, you can change your filters here and you have your options and they give you extensive options so you can optimize it for cpu if maybe you're struggling with processing power maybe you have a lot of instances of this thing going and you you need to just take things down a big help too is just close it because it uses quite a bit to generate the spectrum so you see here that's another thing if this is like the only isotope plug you own this is also a great spectrum analyzer they give you a lot of options and the metering options are also phenomenal so you can you can actually go into options and change a bunch of uh, metering options that really this should be like this is really great because it allows you to do true peak uh monitoring on your meters true peak meter monitoring i don't know what you call it anyways your meters can be set to true peak which is super useful for things like inner sample peaking and stuff like that, accounting for what your converter will do to your sound. We'll be talking about that sort of stuff. So it's not like that big of a deal, but that's something that's a plus, I think, with owning anything by Isotope is that I think almost every plug they have, if not uh, anything that that's sort of like a product like this where they've got, you know, processing going on as such, then uh, they will, they'll include their meters and their spectrum analyzer and they're, they're always like high quality. So you have that. You also have some modulation options. If you're familiar with Massive, you can link up parameters to be controlled by an LFO or whatever. Same thing here. Other isotope products also do this. We'll, we'll be looking at that. So you can set it up so that 4 does this or something. Like it's moving around, right? Okay, now let's move around to... There's the trash module again. We have another filter. So we've got two of these, which is really powerful. And that's, that is powerful when you combine it with the dynamics processing. Now, this is crazy because you have a multi-band dynamics. And you can turn things on and off by simply kicking, clicking these power buttons. Uh, the dynamics processing is really powerful. It's a multi-band processor. And you can turn it on by clicking here, multi-band. And you can set your bands. Now, you have these different views. We'll be talking about these. But you, uh, what they really give you is really like everything you could really want for this sort of a deal. You can control your threshold. You've got your different um, uh, compressor settings for your different bands. You can't manipulate this, but you can manipulate it like you can in Massive if you're familiar with Massive. But what's cool is they do give you expansion options and they give you some gate and versus compressor options. And so it's, it's, really, it's really a very comprehensive compressor. And so you can come in here and do some very interesting things, bring back signal that maybe you filtered out but distorted heavily and get some really curious things, especially if you combine it with your convolution. Uh, so also detection filters are super customizable. So you can get a particular band to behave just the way you want. So like, well, we'll be talking about that. Next up, you have like your bands. So you can actually set your bands. You can also solo your bands. So that's the multi-band deal. And of course, your top one is the actual compressor. You can actually see the compressor. You see gain reduction trace. And they also have these tool hints. You can disable or enable those in the dock in the help options. You have your wet dry and your meters and all that stuff. Uh, finally, you have convolution. And if you're not familiar with convolution, it's basically like reverb only. You can get like way crazier than just reverb with this. There's super huge possibilities with distortion here. Um, Future Music did an interview with Noisia when they released their latest album, which is something, 
I can't remember what it's called right now. It's really cool though. They have a track called Tentacles. That's like one of the coolest tracks in the thing. And maybe you guys don't think it's the coolest. Maybe you have like some other track you like, but I really like that one. Uh, outer, outer something. I can't remember. Anyways, you have the ability to do convolution distortion. It has huge distortion possibilities as well as a reverb possibilities. So it's really kind of a curious thing. You basically have like an EQ combined with a multiband compressor combined with a wave shaper, two of them uh combined and i that's the wave shapers combined with their own filter stages and it's multi-band as well which is something that's kind of i've i've not seen a plug that's done that for me but this is the first one that i've really owned i've always just used fruity wave shaper anyways um then you've got another filter you've got your reverb your multi-band and they also have a delay so you can do delay and you have these different delay mode options so it's really a comprehensive thing that we're going to be getting into if you have any questions about this let me know i'm really pretty excited to go into this and really show you how this can be just a powerhouse for you and you saw that that just going off the presets alone is a powerful tool if you have any questions again let me know subscribe support me on patreon and have a blessed day Thank <laughs> you.